the palm of my hand, make sure it's not too greasy, and then slowly work that in. When I came up here 23, 24 years ago now, um, but I decided that one of the things I wanted to do was to paint. And I did a very short class in watercolour painting and it didn't get on very well, I didn't like it. And then one day in Keswick, I was walking through and I saw an advertisement for a demonstration for pastel at the old museum. The chap who was doing the demonstration was Christopher Ashton Stones. And I can remember sitting there watching him and being absolutely and completely enthralled by what was happening and how he worked. And I knew then that that was what I wanted to do. And then I joined this particular art society and one of the demonstrators they had just after I joined was Christopher. And again, I was absolutely fascinated by what he was doing and he then mentioned that he was doing classes up at Threlkeld and I was then went along there as a complete beginner and I was actually stayed with him for it was about eight years and sadly he died very young of cancer and uh, that's really it was him that taught me and I carried on with the pastel for quite a long time after that and then gradually moved into oils and a little bit of watercolour I do. So I'm just slowly building that up. I won't do too much on it because sometimes you can overwork your skies and I can always go back to it. I'm not putting it on really thickly, thickly. I'm, I'm just building up my colours. You only really need to touch it. Just getting these distant fouls in. Don't know. Just slowly forming those fouls. I don't really want too much detail in the back because there's quite a bit of foreground. What colour is that now? I can't quite see. Um, the darker. Kind of a navy blue. I'm trying not to stick to one colour, slowly build up different colours. Gosh, they frighten the lives out. They're so clean. 
no, he's, um, but no, I, I'm afraid I get to the stage where really I can't tell one colour from another because um, they've all sort of gone down to a, um, a dull grey. But um, it's, I, and I clean them with um, ground rice. I chose that particular picture because I felt that it had the mountains and um, some trees, and water and rocks in it. So for a landscape, you're virtually covering um, the different elements that you would have. And, and I've tried to put the, um, the more bluer tones to the back and I'm gradually working my lighter tones to the front. So if it's a cool colour, um, cool blue, um, a cool pink, a cool green goes to the back and the colours that contain more reds, the oranges, come to the front and then that way you get your recession. I'm just going to put in some branches and this is when I would use something quite fine to bring in the, just, just to a little bit, just to give them a little bit of form. And it's here that you want your harder edge pastels. Do you ever use pastel pencils? Well, I've got them here, religiously. <laughs> but, but no, I, I mean I don't use them very often. I think actually you find that with the pastel pencils, and perhaps with the contact, if you did animals yeah. and you want the fur, yeah. you can't actually get such a sharp edge with unisonous because they, they are soft. Yeah, they're much too soft. I'll turn it round for you. Take it off the edge. Just so that you can. Is the light on that? Can you see? But for me, it was better on the screen. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> the colours are different. So, anyway, I'll put some, I work a bit further down and I'll put in some rocks in down the bottom here and give you another dimension. So, all the time, you're looking to um, give a three dimensional effect. <laughs> 